If you have your Bibles, you can turn. Otherwise, if you just want to read today and receive, that's fine too. Hallelujah. We've been talking about vision, and we talked about that vision is simply a clear understanding of the direction that you're going. And we've talked, and it's really hard to try to compound uh, the past month of services that we've had and the revelation we've talked about. But we're at this point where we understand that if you're, if you're fulfilling your vision and you're walking it out, that there will come a time and a season like David's life when you'll be surrounded by people of negative influences. And that's why you have to have a dream that functions independently of support, that God gives you Everything, all the tools, all the resources for you to fulfill your dream. Can you say amen? We talked about why that's important because if that was the case, if I had to wait on you to line up with me to do what I'm called to do, I would wait and spend my whole life because you might love me today and hate me tomorrow. Amen. I know there's no shout in here yet, but just wait just a second. It's building because I'm going somewhere. I'm excited because we identified and realized that God placed resources down inside of us. And until we tap into those resources, we'll always live a life less than. But if we could ever discover what God placed on the inside of us, it would revolutionize our world, our finances, our family, our way of thinking. It would change it all because God has placed everything inside of us. We talked about how the continent of Africa, how that the continent of Africa is the continent with the most resources, the most diamonds, the most oil, mineral deposits. Yet the entire continent is in civil war with itself and remains in total poverty where there's more widespread epidemic of disease than any other continent and we have other countries that come in and mine from their resources and take from their resources and Africa is, it hasn't got to the place where they can benefit from what God has placed inside of them and at the same time until you learn how to mine what God placed on the inside of you you'll always live in poverty you'll be in civil war with yourself your mind those people around you you'll never be able to get along the epidemic of disease will come and eat your finances and eat your joy and eat your happiness and eat your peace away to the point until you learn to mind what's on the inside of you at the same time God will send people into your life to be a blessing to you but because you've never mind what's inside of you people will come and use your stuff and you won't even be able to benefit from the relationship while they're benefiting from what you have I wish somebody would get on the same page with me today because what I'm talking about is if we could ever understand that God placed something great on the inside of me and I'm not cocky and I'm not proud to say that I'm just come to terms I realize what I'm capable of doing because that empowers me to realize what I'm not capable of doing. So in the sense, I can find what God has placed inside of me to do by the resources he's given me. It empowers me. It enables me. And if you could ever learn what God placed inside of you, you would be empowered and enabled. Right. We're talking about vision, right? Yes. For God-given visions, there's always provision. Provision. Yes. Provision. God takes your vision. He says, I want to make you the best at it. I want to make you a professional at it. So he takes and makes you a professional at your vision. You put the two words together, you got provision because you can't do anything unless you have something to work with. Are you with me? Everyone on the same page. Every single one of us has something to work with. Genesis chapter 15, 13 and 14. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Somebody say, come out. I love that phrase, to come out with great substance. At the same time, we're talking about the children of Israel. And I want to talk about three types of provision that I'd planned on taking three weeks to talk about. Well, first one, we're talking about temporary provision. Second one is daily provision, and the last is a place of permanent provision. Because through the course of your life and your dreams, you will encounter the first two. But very few people ever enter into permanent provision where their need for needs is met, or the place that they get to where they just have to think about it, and God sends it to them. Have you got there yet? If you have, I want to come stay at your house for a little while. I'm getting there. I'm on my way. This is the closest I've ever been. I'm telling you. I'm excited about it because I've understood most people get stuck in temporary provision. Because if you make something temporary, permanent in your life, it becomes a deficit and a setback. When we read these two scriptures, it talks about a prophecy over the children of Israel. He said that they were going to go into a land and for 400 years they would be enslaved. They would have great trouble, great trials. But at the end of that, because they went through some stuff, they would come out with some stuff, which tells me if we're ever going to fulfill our dreams, we've got to realize it's not going to be easy. 
In other words, not everything's going to be handed to you on a silver platter. You're not just going to step in and stroll. And that's why I'm, I'm, I love how, how Pastor Dave spoke up and said, you've got to speak with your words and annihilate some things. You've got to have some power. And you've got to have some passion behind that power. You've got to be at the place where you can say, you know what? It doesn't matter what I encounter through the course of my journey. Nothing will stop me from my destiny. Why? Because the same God of my history is going to bring me into my destiny. Has God ever done anything for anybody? I'm I'm looking for somebody with just enough hope that I can just crank the hope up inside of you and cause you to be so excited you'd swing into hell with a water pistol with me today because I'm that excited. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of living a life of mediocrity, of living a life of less than, of living below what God has called me to do. Why? Because I've got a vision. I see where I'm going, and now I'm waiting for the provision to come with me. Because for every vision, there is provision. We talked about how Israel, how they would go through some things. Let's talk about why they went through some things. Genesis 45, verses 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. 8. So now it was not that you sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of the house, and ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father's house, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all of Egypt. Come down unto me, and tarry not. Remember the story of Joseph? And how his brother sold him into slavery? Because his whole issue was he never learned how to carry the favor of God on his life. And that's a sermon in itself. He come down in the field while his brothers were sweating and plowing, wearing his nice coat of many colors. His father gave him and said, what's happening, fellas? Just come to check on you, seeing everything, everything, everything's good in your life. And they got jealous, and they had hatred for him. And they, they cast him into a pit for a while. And then they sold him into slavery and told his, their father that he had died. Isn't it amazing how the people that hate you many times will push you where you need to go? Did you know Judas did more for Jesus than any other disciple? Because if Judas had never betrayed him, Christ would have never entered into his place of ministry where he could have died for our sins. He would have missed his moment unless people that hated him pushed him into his blessing, which tells me if I've got some people that are haters, that are hating on my life, it makes me excited because it tells me they're about to help me get someplace I need to go. At the same time, when they saw Joseph, Joseph was a blessing in seed form. And in this passage of Scripture, Joseph had been, his life had been orchestrated by God, and the very events of his life foretold the greatness of God, because now he's in a place where he's father to Pharaoh. He's, he's over all the land, and even though there's a famine in the land, God gave him wisdom to understand how to be preserved during times of famine. And it amazes me, because he, he was a dreamer. Are you with me? And in the midst of his dreaming, God... God taught him how to be faithful, and in his faithfulness, he showed him how to be successful in times of famine. And I wish I had time to just to stay there. But we see that, that when the children of Israel were first brought into Egypt, Egypt was a type of provision for them. Yes. We many times teach about how, how Egypt is a type of sin, and, and metaphorically it was. It was a type of, of bondage over their life. But when they first were brought into Egypt, it was a blessing to them. It was a, it was a time of provision. And it amazes me because here's Joseph and he's standing before his brothers and he had to take time and say, you don't recognize me? I'm Joseph, your brother. And it amazes me how that, that Joseph had the provision in seed form in his life. But since then, his brothers hadn't seen him, how the seed had grown and come to harvest. Because he did, they couldn't understand how the little Joseph that they hated and despised, that they sold into slavery, could attain so much and do so much with what appeared to be so little. But isn't it amazing how God can take a seed? And if it takes a little bit of time, in that time he produces a harvest? Isn't it amazing how if we can have just a little bit of patience and just a little bit of faith, how the, when the blessing does come, when we are in the place, where we're fulfilling our vision we're going to have to stop and put up a sign and say guess what I'm just your brother in the Lord I'm just your sister I realize I look so much different but last time you saw me I just had it in seed form but I'm looking for the seed to begin to grow and prosper and develop because something's about to change in my life that caused me to be so blessed people can't understand why that can be the same me he had to stop and say, go ahead, stop the roll, back the script up, make everything new again. Why? Because I'm your brother. I'm not mad. I'm not upset because the fact that you hated me did more for me than you ever could have done when you liked me. 
And he said, the reason you've come here in verse 7 is because I'm here to preserve a posterity, to provide a legacy. Because a real blessing, real resources provide legacy. It's not just about you, but guess what? It's about your children and your children's children. It's about a generational blessing. On a natural side of it, you should teach your kids the things you love to do. Don't let your legacy, don't let your talents 